All right, what's up everybody? This is Jay Brown, Weekend Hooker. This is my 2024 GMC AT4 in Thunderstorm Gray. It has the 6.6 .6 liter gas V8. And I know it's, there's a lot of debate between everybody about to use a catch can or not use a catch can. <clears throat> there's a couple things about these motors when General Motors developed them in each of the valve covers, they have designed them to act like catch cans, right? So that as the oil is heated up, it gets up into that upper valve train, it starts to get atomized up into the air, right? Or into the system for the positive crankcase ventilation on these motors it atomizes that oil and it gets pushed up from the engine here, goes up into this catch can. And this catch can has a set of diffusers in it that allows that oil in the vapor to collect. And when it collects, it then sends just air back down into the system, which this is your throttle body right here. And so that goes directly back into the intake manifold. And that intake manifold sits in the valley of the V8, right? And all of your intake runners are there. So this is allowing air to go into your engine, which is nothing more than a big vacuum pump anyway. And so this is getting sucked down in, back into the system. So this positive crankcase ventilation is designed by the engineers to do exactly what it says, what the name is. It ventilates the crankcase so you don't overpressurize the crankcase. <clears throat> well, like I said, General Motors engineers have, if you watch the videos on YouTube on these engines, they've done a good job of slowing down the amount of oil vapors that actually can make it up into this system. Well, like I said, there's a big debate on these engines whether to use a catch can or not okay so what i'm getting ready to show you and you can't really see very well down in there because it's black but what i'm getting ready to show you is how much <clears throat> is in this system after 2500 miles now some will say well there's a lot of moisture in that. That's not just oil. You know, obviously, air gets in that system. It's atomized. And you, you wouldn't be lying. Yeah, it's mixed with air, just as your oil sitting in your crankcase, there's air in that system. Whether you like it or not, there's air, there's moisture, okay? Now, we also have direct injection engines so the direct injection has been known to cause a little more saturation with fuel into the oil. And that's never a good thing. So the debate also is how far should you go on an oil change? Now, I'm not going to get into that. What I am going to tell you, you can see the color of the oil. This is Pennzoil Platinum Plus. Okay. What I'm gonna tell you is I've run a lot of high performance cars, SRTs, boosted applications, and those things are wicked when it comes to the amount of oil that gets into the system. Well, you can see that little line. Let me find, there we go. So I used just a medicine um, beaker to measure out 30 milliliters. Well, as you can see, 30 milliliters is just above that line. So if you were taking the average dose of medicine, sinus medicine, whatever, cough medicine for an adult, two of those capfuls full is what's there. Now, here's the kicker. In the last 2,500 miles, the truck's got a little over um, 4,000 on it now, but in the last 2,500 miles that I've driven the truck since changing the oil, the breaking oil out, and putting the Penzoil Platinum Plus in it, that's what would have gone into the intake track. So, 
your intake valves, right, on this engine are not getting washed by gasoline because it's not a port injection engine. If it was port injection, then in the port, in the valley of the V8, where those intake valves are sitting there, coming down, opening up, allowing air to go in, the injectors are in the cylinder on a direct injection motor. On a port injection, in the valley of the beast is where you're injecting that port injected fuel down into right on top of the intake valves. When you have that common design, well, I say common now, direct injection is common, you're washing those intake valves. And when you wash those intake valves, you know, you don't have any real trouble with keeping them clean. They don't gum up, they don't cause you problems. This going in to your, your intake system, it's gonna gum up the throttle body much quicker. It's gonna gum up your, your valves much quicker. So there are some, there are some cleaners that you can use to spray <clears throat> into the intake system. And you could actually use this catch can as a mode of getting that into the system. If you just, if you put a small valve here and you could spray some what they call uh, seafoam creep in there, it would then wash over the top of those valves. Um, may do that probably around 20, 30,000 miles just to help keep it clean. Anyway, the gist of this is all direct injected engines we're gonna add a little bit of fuel saturation into your oil to change your oil more often. But these catch cans, they aren't a joke. They aren't a, a you know, snake oil, whatever remedy that some people call them. They work, there's a purpose for them. And there's a reason why all of your high performance application motors and uh, teams run catch cans. If you're running a boosted application and you run the, the vehicle hard, you absolutely need one. This truck has seen nothing but daily driving to and from work over the last 2,500 miles. So, with that being said, I'll get in the truck now. To just show you the mileage. All right, we're of course not going to crank it. You're not listening right now, right? Let's turn that off. And of course, it's not going to show me simply because I'm not starting the vehicle with the positive crankcase ventilation system opened up like it is. All right. Well, I'm sorry. You can see right there. 4,175 miles. I changed the oil at 1,800 miles for break-in. <clears throat> so, there you have it. Let's turn this thing off. And, uh, yeah, love the truck. It's a pretty awesome truck. It tows a camper. 48 foot camper, it tows catamaran. I, of course, have checked it out, towed it. Don't y'all love that? Snowman, Santa Claus, up there. Love the color. Really enjoy the truck. It's great for daily driving. Had a 2022 Cummins diesel, and while it's, you know, never gave me a problem. Just all the diesel crap, emissions, hate it. I won't go back to a diesel, don't need one. This tow's a 42 foot bighorn camper down toward the coast, just fine. Anyway, that's my rant. And if anybody was wondering, uh, I did check the oil since, uh, since changed, changed the oil in this exact same spot and it has consumed no oil. So there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully we'll uh, get some more videos up here soon of this thing doing some work. Peace out.